Hi everyone, welcome to my temporary studio. My name is Mark and I'm an artist and an art professor. In this short lesson, I'm going to show you a very valuable drawing technique called charcoal reduction. This is one of the easiest and most flexible ways of drawing, useful for a range of applications from quick gestural studies to long, detailed academic rendering. Not only do I love it for figure and portrait drawing, this is my preferred method for doing sketches for my paintings. I'll show you everything you need to know to get started, and then as a bonus, I'll give you a sneaky trick to make it work even better. Let's get started. Here are the materials we're going to be using. The first is white drawing paper. Any kind of white drawing paper with a medium tooth will be just fine. You don't want something too smooth because the charcoal is going to have a hard time sticking to it. This particular paper is made by Strathmore. This is their sketch weight, their 70 pound series. Then you're going to need some charcoal pencils. I recommend buying a few different hardnesses, a medium, a soft, and an extra soft, or if the pencils are marked on the HB scale, a 2B, a 4B, or a 6B. I recommend either getting Conte or the Faber-Castell Pit. Those are two excellent lines of charcoal pencils, but really any brand of charcoal pencil will do. However, if you're living in the US, I do not recommend General's brand charcoal pencils because they tend to be of lesser quality. Another brand I don't recommend are the charcoal pencils made by Derwent. Why? Because, as opposed to different softnesses, they come in different values, a light, medium, and dark, which is not quite so useful for this particular technique. Then, you need something called a chamois cloth. So I'll write it up on the screen. Chamois cloth is a really soft piece of leather. They usually in the store comes in kind of a light brown, a tanned color, and then once you start using the charcoal, it becomes pitch black. Only the chamois will work for this technique. Do not buy any substitute, a paper towel, or there are some, in the US, some artificial chamois cloths called chamois for cleaning cars. You absolutely need a chamois cloth. Another very important material for this technique is extra soft compressed charcoal. It has to be extra soft and it has to be compressed. Why? Because there are essentially two types of charcoal on the market. You have something called vine or willow charcoal, and then you have compressed charcoal, also sometimes just called pressed charcoal. The difference is that vine or willow charcoal is just natural charcoal. So those are sticks, usually willow, that are put into a kiln and through the absence of oxygen heated and turned into charcoal. That's an excellent material for some uses, but not for this particular technique. And the difference between vine or willow charcoal and this charcoal is that they take charcoal, they put it into a press, they add some oils and waxes to it to make a much denser material. And that material is going to stick to the paper better and allow us to do charcoal reduction. So you're not going to be able to do charcoal reduction with vine or willow charcoal. Make sure it's, once again, extra soft compressed charcoal nothing else will do. So if you buy a medium stick or a soft stick of charcoal, it's not gonna work quite as well. This is really important to making this technique successful. Extra soft compressed charcoal. You're also gonna need two kinds of erasers. You're gonna need a hard eraser. This one's made of white nylon. I believe it was originally made by Stadler. And then you're gonna need something called a kneaded eraser. So those are sold in little gray squares and they're called kneaded erasers because you can knead them like dough. And these two erasers are actually for two entirely different purposes, as you shall see. You're gonna need both for this technique. And then it's also really helpful to get a few little eraser holders. I've got two little ones here. Uh, this one, I actually don't remember the original brand, but uh, lots of companies make this type of eraser or at least um, release under their brand, this type of eraser. And this one is made by Tambao. This is a Japanese company. And the difference is the material is the same. Uh, this one's a little bit thinner, narrower. This one's a little bit wider. And they're really excellent for erasing out little details, little sharp corners. So depending on how detail-oriented you are, you might require one of these two eraser holders. The other option is to start erasing out little corners and sharp details is to cut your larger eraser into wedges, which is why this has such an odd shape to it. These little corners allow me to work into little details where I need to erase out little tiny edges. 
So a few different kinds of erasers are really useful, but most importantly, a hard eraser, a white nylon eraser like this one, and a kneaded eraser. And then, depending on how much detail you want to introduce into your drawing, you also might want to get some eraser holders. Another incredibly useful material is a blending stump like this. This is partially style dependent, but if you want to get smooth blending, seamless blending, blending stumps are really the way to go. You can blend with your fingers, you can blend with a paper towel, of course you can, but uh, this will allow you to achieve a degree of detail that is inaccessible with other blending materials. Usually they come in sets, often they come in sets. I re recommend getting blending stumps of a few different sizes. So a blending stump. And really, that's it. Uh, you might notice that my charcoal pencil is sharp and long. This allows me to hold the pencil sideways, to shade quickly, and also hold my pencil a number of different ways. In order to sharpen the pencil this way, you're going to need an X-Acto knife. And I'll link to a video in the description section where I show you guys how to sharpen the pencil correctly. It's actually an important part to drawing with a charcoal pencil. Um, having it sharpened this way. So if you don't want to sharpen the pencil using the X-Acto knife, I recommend you watch the video, my tutorial on sharpening pencils, and it'll show you how to do that. Here is how this technique works. I'm going to take my extra soft compressed charcoal and gently start rubbing it into my paper. Don't press down too much. It's going to create a strong texture, which you might not be able to get rid of. Apply a single coat, and then take your chamois and start rubbing it into the paper. The first application of charcoal is going to be kind of noisy. You can see there's a little bit of paper texture. You can see the strokes, and the value here is still a little bit too light. So we're going to need to apply another coat. Let's go again. Again, don't press down too hard. And let's do another application with the chamois. And you can see that with the second coat, the paper tone becomes a little bit smoother, the texture starts going away, and the value darkens. Depending on your charcoal, depending on the paper, usually this takes three or four applications to get to the tone you want. And what you're looking for is something that is completely smooth, without texture, without stroke direction, and approximately 50% gray, somewhere in the middle. So you can see that the texture is going away, and the paper is getting very, very smooth. And essentially what's happening is that the charcoal particles are staining the paper fibers. They're burying themselves into the paper, so that if I run my fingers across the paper, it's not gonna lift off anymore. The paper has been toned. Now, one thing to be careful of is to avoid putting your fingers directly on the paper, because when you do that, the oils on your fingers are gonna create little fingerprints. So you can see I've done that here. So if there's any irregularities, it's probably due to the fact that my hands have been touching the paper. Now. When I have a drawing down, it's not going to make that big of a difference. It's a little bit like staring at a blank wall and worrying that there's a little tiny scratch. Well, once the wall has been hung with paintings, once there's a mural there, you're not going to notice the slight imperfections. But still, when you're holding your paper down, use your fingernails and not the tips of your fingers, which are going to transfer oil. Now, the great thing about this technique, one of its many advantages, is that I get to control the value of the paper. So if I want to do a drawing that's very dark and dramatic, I can apply more layers of charcoal. If I want to do something that's lighter in tone in general, I can make the, little, the paper a little bit lighter. And 
if I want to add color to this, as opposed to using charcoal, I can use some inexpensive pastels and tone my paper a blue, a green. I can mix different colors together. They're going to work almost exactly the same as the charcoal reduction, but it's an easy way of adding color to a drawing while still working in black and white. So this is the initial base I'm looking for, something that's perfectly smooth and about 50% gray. Here is how this technique works. Let's say I'm doing a simple value scale where the paper represents the mid-tone, the 50% gray. To go darker, I'm going to use my charcoal pencil and then I can use my blending stump to blend it down if I want. Like so. And now my eraser actually becomes a drawing tool. So to go lighter, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser, I can roll it up in a little ball, and start gently lifting up the tone of the paper to go lighter. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the kneaded eraser is only going to erase so far. So no matter how much I rub with the kneaded eraser, I'm not going to be able to lift up all the way up to the white of the paper. Why? Because the paper is stained a little bit with the charcoal. To go lighter, you're going to use your harder eraser. So hard eraser is a little bit of a harsher tool, and it's used to get your very brightest values. It's going to help you get that strong white that you're looking for. So the idea is that you always start off with your kneaded eraser and then for finishing up the drawing you can transfer to your hard eraser. The other difference is that the kneaded eraser is much better for getting softer edges. So when you're getting soft transitions, rounded forms, your kneaded eraser is much better suited for that. But if you need sharp edges, then you're going to use your hard eraser. So if there's some kind of strong transition from light to dark, some kind of sharp edge, you're going to use your hard eraser to do that. And this is where the eraser holders are so effective because you can use them to get those little sharp edges we were talking about. In fact, you can use these little eraser holders to apply all different kinds of textures, hatch marks, like so. Right, so they're really useful for this kind of drawing. Now, the question is, if your eraser is now a drawing tool, if it's the equivalent to white chalk, how do you erase? Well, you use your chamois. So your chamois is now your erasing tool. And you can see that you can very, very easily rub your drawing down. And you're only going to be able to see a little faint remnant of what happened before in the very darkest values. For the most part, it's going to erase completely out. And if you want to erase this out even more, you can run your kneaded eraser over it, lighten it a little bit, right? and then go over it with a chamois, and that should more or less get rid of whatever remnant, remnant is left. So that's the general principles of this technique. The other thing you may have noticed is that the blending stump doesn't just blend, it also erases a little bit, it lightens the value. So when we blend, it takes off a little bit of the charcoal and lightens the value just a touch. So the principle here is that for your very, very strongest darks, put them down and don't blend them, because if I blend them, it's going to lift off the charcoal, and we're not going to get those really strong, deep, dark accents that we're looking for. And here's how this technique works in practice. Uh, let's say I'm rendering a sphere. I'm going to start off with my charcoal. I might want to identify where the shadows are in the sphere. So let's say light is coming from this direction, I'm going to use the side of my pencil to indicate where the light transitions in the shadow. 
Then I'm also going to indicate where my cast shadow is. Let's say right about here. And then the idea is to shade a little bit. Then I can use my blending stump to soften the shadow edges. Like so. And then immediately jump to the erasing stage. Shade a little bit, erase a little bit. So I'm going to start erasing out. So I'm starting with my kneaded eraser here. I might also erase a little bit next to the cast shadow here. Right, uh, this is where the harder erasers are better. If we have a little bit of light passing behind the sphere here, we've got some sharper silhouetted edges here. You can use your harder eraser to do that. So you shade a little bit, erase a little bit, then shade a little more. So now I'm going to start working into the core shadow. So that's going to be the darker component of my shadows. I can make the cast shadow a little bit darker. Let's give it a little blend. And erase a little bit more. So now I'm going to start getting a fuller range of value in the lights. Let's say light is also hitting the stand. A little bit behind the object, there's a little bit of light passing. And now I'm going to bounce back and finish the drawing in the shadows, getting my darkest darks. So let's say this part of the cast shadow is going to be the darkest spot. There might be a little bit of a darker value in the core shadow here. Let's say there's a little bit of a sharper edge here. Let's give that a little bit of a blend. And then I'm going to finish the sphere in the lights. That's going to be the very last step. So now I'm going to switch to my lighter eraser and start erasing a little bit more. So this is the lighter portion here. And then I'm going to use my hard eraser to pop out the highlight, which might be, let's say, somewhere here on the sphere. Last thing I might do is maybe put in the very, very darkest darks. The idea, be, the idea being is that you start off with your gray midtone and gradually work in both directions, a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. So you're pulling both towards the lights and the darks. Why is that important? Because value is relative. It's very difficult to know how dark something needs to go, how dark a shadow needs to go, without having the lighter part of the form next to it. It's only through the comparison between the lights and darks that you get the correct balance. So that's always the problem, the trick, the difficulty of working on toned paper. If I start by shading and I shade the object all the way down to the darkest shadows without adding the lights, it increases the chance that I'll end up making the shadows too dark. Why? Because I'm comparing those shadow values to the gray of the paper and not the lighter value right next to it. So there's going to be a tendency in this technique, if you don't bounce back and forth between the shadows and lights, to ultimately end up with a drawing that is too dark in the shadows, where the shadows are so dark they actually look like they're falling through, they're cutting into the form. So always, any kind of tone paper technique, shade, add a little bit of light, shade a little bit more, add a little bit more light, shade a little bit more, and then towards the end of the drawing, add your extremes of light and dark. Always be pulling in both directions when using this technique. Now, one thing you can do to increase the range of contrast, if you're not able to erase out all the way towards white. So 
the paper's a little bit stained. I'm using my hard eraser and I'm not quite getting that bright glowing highlight that I'm looking for. In those cases, and only those cases, you can use a little bit of white chalk. The idea being, you only use the white chalk where you absolutely need it, where you've exhausted your ability to erase lighter. So if you cannot, either because of the paper or because of the charcoal, right, uh, get a pure white, erase out as much of the charcoal underneath as possible, and then add a little bit of white to that area. Do not add white everywhere, right? Why? Because if I add white directly over the charcoal, it just mixes in and creates kind of a third gray color, which is a little bit messy. So you can see that I've added a little bit more contrast to the drawing using my white chalk. That is usually the only places where I use that additional material. Now here is the sneaky trick that I promised to show you that'll make this technique work much better. One of the things I mentioned is that sometimes it's hard to erase out that gray tone all the way back to pure white, and that you often need a little bit of white chalk to get a full range of contrast. One way to make the tone erase much better is to prepare your paper with a little bit of talc or cornstarch. So here I have some body powder. I believe this is talc. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on my paper, just a little bit, and then take a paper towel and rub it in. Okay, now I'm gonna shake off the excess. Take my stick of charcoal and apply the tone. You'll notice right away that the application of charcoal is a lot smoother. Let's take my chamois and rub it in. You can see there's already a lot less texture. So we're not gonna have to do quite as much rubbing to get a smooth ground. Let's apply another coat. Again, you're still looking for a 50% gray. That part's the same. Let's apply one more coat. The difference now though is because the body powder buried itself into the paper fibers at the beginning, the charcoal doesn't quite go as deeply into the paper fibers, doesn't stain the paper quite as much. So let's shade a little bit. And then you'll see that now when I erase, the erasing is a lot more effective. So I don't have to apply quite as much pressure to get lighter. And that lighter tone is a lot brighter. So this technique allows me to get really strong contrast much more easily than if I was using charcoal alone. And you can see that even with the kneaded eraser, I can erase all the way up to the white of the paper. And then if I want to use a hard eraser, I can go even brighter. Makes it very, very easy to erase out strong, bright highlights. And even if you're working with a little eraser holder like this, you can see that it allows for really sharp details because the charcoal erases out 
so easily. And you can see with the previous example, let's go back to the paper that wasn't prepared this way. Not so easy to do, right? I'm trying to erase. I'm not getting the same bright marks. Here I'm doing a little portrait of my daughter, and while I draw, let's discuss the reasons why I think this technique is so important. Charcoal reduction is widely taught in art schools because it's easily correctable and a great way to teach students about value. Its usefulness extends beyond the educational, however, because not only is it a beautiful way to draw in its own right, it's also, to my mind, the very best way to do preparatory studies for finished work in other media. Here are some final sketches that I did for my graphic novel using this very technique. Its main advantage for preparatory studies and final sketches, other than its extreme correctability, is the ease with which you can make very large adjustments, so I can lighten areas with a kneaded eraser, or easily make a background darker in ways that are more difficult to do in other media. And since it's correctable, you're not as worried about making mistakes, freeing you to make bold choices. Furthermore, if you're working for a client who is requesting to see a final sketch, working in this technique will allow you to easily make corrections to your sketch should the client ask for them, as opposed to starting all over. For this reason, and this reason alone, this is the technique I require my illustration students to use when making sketches. Yes, nowadays everyone is doing things digitally, sketches and final illustrations, but I'm a strong believer in learning to do things physically, even if the ultimate goal is to work on the computer. It teaches you to be systematic in the way you work, which is why so many of the very best digital artists have backgrounds in traditional media. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and if you did, please comment and subscribe, and enjoy my other tutorials and art material reviews. Thanks so much for watching, and see you back in my studio very soon. Bye-bye.